So we're gonna be getting ready for a trip here in about uh, a month. And uh, Alpine's been sitting for a couple of months. So I want to show you a few things that I like to do to my suburban uh, water heater. And uh, you can do these things uh, as well. And this is for the uh, owners of the older Alpines, uh, uh, 2010s up uh, through probably about 2018, 2019 that all come with the uh, Suburban uh, SW12 DEL water heater. And uh, it's dual mode, runs off of uh, 120 volts AC or 12 volts DC and propane. And so we'll discuss a few things. So we'll talk about how to pull this uh, burner assembly and igniter out. I'll show you how to uh, uh, clean the uh, igniter and uh, check that it's uh, in alignment and uh, measure the gap on it. And we'll also check the uh, orifice uh, that uh, we'll see once we get this uh, burner tube and the propane uh, line disconnected from the regulator. And we'll also uh, show you how to troubleshoot uh, and, and make sure these two solenoid valves open. And we'll also pull the cover off of the uh, 120 volt, which is this side, and the 12 volt, which is this side. This is your thermostats, as well as your electric heating element and we'll also talk about this 120 volt uh, switch that you see back here and uh, on some uh, newer alpines uh, uh, inside you'll have two switches one will be for electric and the other for propane uh, when you're going to run the furnace or excuse me the water heater in electric mode not only does that switch uh, inside need to be turned on if you have two switches but also this switch here has to be turned on. If you don't have both these switches turned on uh, and you try to use your water heater uh, on uh, shore power, it's not gonna work. So uh, before I unhook my uh, water, uh, when we're out RVing, <clears throat> I always turn the switch off. That way I know that when I get home and I plug in, uh, that uh, when I drain this water heater, I know I'm not going to burn up my heating element. So it's a habit you might want to get into before you unhook your water. When you're getting ready to uh, leave from uh, an area, turn the switch off here. And if you have two switches inside, turn the one off uh, for the electric side uh, in, the, in there as well. On uh, this particular Alpine, my 2014, uh, I only have one switch inside for propane only. So when I want to use the uh, water heater in electric mode, I have to do it uh, from out here and turn this on, which I kind of like. It uh, uh, keeps you from making some mistakes. And we'll also be pulling off this duct so that uh, we have easier access to pull the igniter out and it'll be easier for us to get uh, to this screw and get this panel out of the way. And with this burner assembly out of the way, we can also remove this cover that uh, uh, covers the uh, 120 volt uh, thermostat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this curlicued line off right here with these two fittings, and we're gonna pull this burner tube assembly out and get this whole thing out so that we can see the igniter, measure it, and make sure that we don't have anything that's up inside here. And uh, we can take a look at this orifice that's on the inside of this when we get this line out and make sure that it's nice and clean. And when I go to take the uh, igniter out, there's two bolts right up here where my fingers are at. And you can see them there, one here and one there. And what I've found that uh, uh, is easier when you go to put this back together is there's four screws. One up here, one right here, and then there's two more right here. If you take those four sheet metal screws off and get this duct piece off out of your way, it makes life a lot easier and you don't cut yourself on uh, some of these sharp edges. So something to consider if you're gonna work on your suburban uh, water heater. Okay, so we've got that big hunk of uh, metal out of the way and now you can get right to these two uh, bolt heads up here so that you can remove this burner tube and the igniter assembly all out as one. 
and uh, much easier to get to. It's also easier when you want to take this cover off uh, for your uh, uh, thermostats and this cover off down here, which is for the electric heating element. Okay, I've now removed these two bolts, which holds this burner tube and igniter assembly in. And you notice that the end down here where these propane lines are connected to, they now move nice and easy. So now I can just reach up in here and I can pop that whole assembly right out uh, along with the wrench and everything else. But uh, now we've got uh, <clears throat> the two bolts that hold the uh, two bolts that held the burner igniter assembly in and the four screws that help the uh, aluminum duct bracket on and we're now looking at the end of this uh, and we can see the igniter and uh, it's fairly clean and we'll measure that gap in a minute it should be about an eighth of an inch and I can see just a little bit of carbon uh, junk on the end of this so we'll get a brush and we'll brush that off and clean it up just a little bit. Uh, when you have this off like this, you want to make sure that you support this and not uh, let this drop and yank and damage the igniter wire. Otherwise, you're going to be going inside because this red wire that you see runs from the igniter inside and feeds up on the top of this water heater. Uh, and you can see it from the inside and there'll be a small control panel in there and that's where the igniter lead hooks up at. What I'm going to do to make life easier, I've slid the red boot back a little bit and you can see the connection right here. And uh, we're simply going to slide this off so that the burner and igniter are free and I'm not taking a chance on yanking this wire and damaging it. Okay, so we've got the uh, igniter and burner tube assembly disconnected so that we don't take a chance on damaging this igniter wire. And we can take a peek up inside and uh, have a look-see and uh, see if there's any uh, uh, foreign debris or dirt up in here and anything like that. And uh, everything looks pretty darn clean. I'm uh, not going to do anything with this at all. And uh, yeah, I guess I could get a brush maybe and wipe it out just a little bit. But this furnace is eight years old. I take this apart uh, usually once or twice a year. I'm taking it apart today uh, for two reasons. Number one, we're getting ready for our trip uh, in late September to uh, up to Yellowstone for about 10 days and I wanted to try and uh, help folks out a little bit that uh, have the older uh, alpines with the suburban water here. Okay I've cleaned the uh, electrode assembly up uh, and I just use a brass brush and just lightly brush this a little bit and we can see that the electrodes are nice and even uh, right, right here they're nice and even together at the tips and we're just going to take a simple uh, ruler that uh, came with the tool kit that I'm using. And we can see that we have roughly one-eighth of an inch gap, if I can hold my hand still. And uh, so one-eighth of an inch gap is perfect. And so that's clean. The gap is checked. And what we're going to do now is on the end of the burner tube where the propane uh, uh, comes in, we're going to take this fitting all the way off uh, and we'll do this one-handed and we can look down inside and you can see a very tiny hole down in the center and we just want to make sure that that's nice and open and uh, I just uh, put my mouth on the end of the brass and blew on it and uh, no problems there you could use your air gun uh, if you have your uh, compressor out or even a can of uh, liquid air and just blow through it to, just to make sure that it's nice and clean. And you can also see the other end of the orifice uh, where it exits and uh, lets the propane into the uh, burner tube assembly. And the gas flows down this assembly and comes out right here at the end and then the igniter fires. And uh, once uh, uh, ignition has occurred, then this igniter also is a flame sensor and it detects it that yes I do have a flame and so if it has uh, the signal that says that yes it has a flame then up here on the rest of the water tank assembly where your propane regulator is at and the solenoid valves are at these valves remain open and the propane keeps flowing and flows through this uh, little tube that we have disconnected right here and flows through the burner tube assembly and you have hot water. 
So we've looked at all of this, we've cleaned it, we've checked the gap, and uh, it didn't need any adjusting at all. So you can see that it's gapped at one eighth of an inch, and that's what it should be. And so we'll be ready to put that back on in a few minutes. And uh, we'll go ahead and reinstall those parts. And then we'll take a look at the uh, uh, electrical side. We'll pull this cover off, which is the cover for the 120 volt heating element. And we'll also pull the cover off for your two reset buttons. And again, the left-hand side is a reset button for the 120 volt, uh, which is the electric uh, hot water heating element. And the right-hand side is for the propane mode. When you go to reinstall this burner assembly, <clears throat> the best way is to not install these two bolts, leave this piece loose like so, and go ahead and install this line on and uh, just finger tighten the line in like so, and then go ahead and start the other line that runs up into the regulator and finger tight. Make sure that you don't get anything cross -fed. They should uh, feed on nice and easy. And if you leave this assembly loose like I have it, it will make putting this uh, curly cued line back on a lot easier. So now we're gonna reinstall these two bolts. And we're gonna finish tightening up these two fittings. And then we're going to reinstall the igniter plug onto the end of the igniter excuse me, the igniter plug cable onto the end of the igniter and make sure that the boot is back over covering everything. Okay, now we're gonna demonstrate and you'll be able to hear these two solenoids click and you'll also hear this igniter fire and you'll see the blue flame uh, when the propane starts to flow and is actually uh, ignited and flowing inside. Okay, turn it on, dear. Okay, now she slipped the switch on. There's a little bit of a timer delay. We'll hear the solenoids here in just a minute as the delay runs down. Solenoids click, and you can see the blue flame inside. Okay, turn it off. Now, if you notice, the furnace ran for a minute and then turned off. The reason it turned off is because I have the propane turned off and so once it was able to uh, siphon out uh, what was left in the propane line, uh, it couldn't detect any more propane and the flame quit and the igniter couldn't see the flame. Okay, so we have turned the propane on and uh, we wife has flipped on the propane switch inside we will hear and you can feel if you have your finger on these two solenoids you won't get shot there was a solenoids opening up and it's on the inside you can see the flame going and you can hear the igniter flying okay turn it off and so there's how you can successfully verify that uh, your furnace is going to work in the propane mode uh, when the switch is turned on inside, you'll have a timer delay of about uh, 20 to 30 seconds. And then once that delay is up, you'll hear this click click on these two solenoids and you will hear the uh, igniter fire and you should have ignition and a flame just like you saw. And thank you very much, dear, for your help. And the wife says, yeah, uh -huh, and she's going to go back inside. And when I take these covers off just for preventative maintenance every year, I just like to take a look-see and make sure that my connections look nice and clean, that I don't see any evidence of overheating or burnt up uh, connectors. Uh, there was one member uh, on the Alpine group that uh, posted uh, uh, quite a while back and one of these uh, connections was actually burnt. And uh, so that made life a little bit difficult for him. But look for any evidence of uh, any overheating. And uh, same thing down here on your electrical thermostat. And you can see where it's installed at. And uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take one of these screws loose. And we'll put an ohm meter on this electric heating element. And we'll ohm it out. And by doing so, uh, uh, this will tell me whether or not this heating element is good or bad. In my case, I know it was good uh, when I used it uh, back in May, but uh, we're fixing to make a 10 day trip, so I wanna make sure it's still good. And whenever you're gonna make any uh, voltage measurements on uh, your Alpine, uh, when it comes to uh, the 120 volt side, uh, the first thing I would do is remove the shore power cable. That way you know that you won't get shocked. 
Okay, and what I've done now is I have removed the white wire off of the electric heating element. I've attached one end of my multimeter to the still attached black lead that goes to the heating element. And on the other screw, you don't need to take these screws all the way out to get these wires off. Just back it out enough and then this spade terminal will slip right off. And we now have our meter set in the ohms position. And so now what we're gonna do is take the red lead and we're gonna touch to this screw right here. And we're gonna look down here at our multimeter and we'll zoom in a little bit. And we can see that that heating element is reading 9.8 ohms. And uh, the spec on the heating element off the top of my head is about eight and a half to 11 ohms. So uh, that tells me that the heating element is good and that if in fact I do get 120 volts uh, power through this black lead and this white lead from this switch right down here that I'm pointing to, and also the inside switch if you happen to have dual switches, then if I have 120 power coming to this thermostat, uh, or excuse me, to this heating element, it in fact is gonna heat my hot water and I'm gonna be a happy camper. Now if I went and owned this out and my reading looked like this, then what that's telling me is that my heating element is burned out and is no good and so the suburban water heater is not going to work uh, if I try to use the uh, electric side uh, of the water heater to uh, get my water hot. And uh, also if I had a reading such as this, and we'll get the meter lead on there in just a second, if I was reading a reading like this, then that tells me that the hot water heating element is shorted out. And, the, and again, it's not gonna work, and most likely what's gonna happen is I'm gonna pop the circuit breaker uh, inside uh, on the power center uh, that is for the 120 volt uh, uh, line that feeds this uh, suburban water heater to run in electric mode. So we don't wanna see a dead short like that, and we don't wanna see an open like that. What we wanna see with and it's important, you need to remove, let me zoom back out. It's important that you remove the white wire. I remove the white wire because it's the easiest one to get to. Remove it from the screw, hook your multimeter up to the black lead, that wire can still be connected. And then take a look at your ohm reading and you wanna see somewhere in the neighborhood of eight and a half to 10 ohms, eight to 10 ohms, eight to 11 ohms, anywhere around in there that tells you, hey, my uh, electric heating element's in good shape and uh, uh, my water heater's gonna work uh, if I get 120 volts uh, through the switch uh, to this heating element. So that's uh, how you can quickly test this. If you screw up and uh, turn this switch on, down here, if you turn this switch on and you have no water in the water heater tank, and if you don't realize it, then within about five to 10 minutes at the most, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna burn out this heating element. And you'll know it because you'll start smelling a funny smell on uh, the side where your water heater's at. In my case, on this Alpine, it's on the left-hand side. And so if you smell something uh, that's uh, burning and you turned your water heater on and you don't have water in that water heater tank, uh, you're gonna burn it up in about five to 10 minutes. If you happen to do that, uh, turn the power off, let everything cool down, and then you can go and find this heating element that I'm pointing to. And I'll uh, use, a, somebody said I should use a laser pointer, but uh, I got one somewhere, but I can't find it. But uh, this, uh, this plug right here that I'm pointing at is the heating element, and you're gonna need a big socket to fit on this. And uh, sometimes they can be a pain to get out. You wanna, of course, pull this burner tube assembly off so that you can get a straight shot in. And then unscrew this heating element and go to Home Depot or Lowe's or any RV store should have it also. And what you're looking for is a uh, 1500 watt, 120 volt uh, heating element. 
And if you go to a Lowe's or Home Depot, pay attention to what you're buying because uh, uh, they sell both the 240 volt uh, heating elements, which is what you'll find uh, typically in a house, or uh, they'll, they also have the 120. So if you want the uh, element that says 120 volts, 1500 watts. Okay, so the previous clip there, we verified that the uh, electric heating element is in fact good with the uh, resistance reading. We had about 9.9 .9 ohms. And now what I'm gonna do is one more check before I reconnect this white wire. So you can see that I have the red meter lead is connected to the white wire. The black meter lead is connected uh, to the black wire. The white lead is still removed from the heating element. I have now connected shore power and I have set my multimeter into AC mode. And you can see where it says AC mode. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach up here and I'm gonna flip the switch on. And what we wanna see is somewhere in the neighborhood of 120 volts AC. And so we see 119.9 volts, there's 120. So we in fact know that I am getting 120 volts coming through this switch, coming to these two wires that go to this electric heating element. So I know for a fact that uh, when I make this next trip, I know that this uh, electric heating element is going to work and that we're going to have uh, uh, hot water using the 120 volt side. And uh, again, the meter was set to volts. AC, you don't want to have it in DC. And uh, we still have shore power disconnect, or shore power is connected because I was making this measurement. So now, before we do anything else, we're going to go back and disconnect shore power and then we will reconnect the white lead that I have removed from the uh, heating element. And we'll back up a step before we uh, reconnect this wire and disconnect uh, the shore power uh, in the process of hooking this wire up. What I've done, what I've done is uh, left the uh, red wire connected down here on the white wire that I have removed from the heating element. And I have relocated the black lead that we had hooked up to the uh, other side of the heating element. What we're going to do is we're going to take and attach it up to the top side of the 120 volt uh, thermostat. And what we're going to do now is we're going to turn the power switch on and we can see that we in fact are getting 120 volts uh, through that uh, thermostat as well. And uh, the reason I wanted to show you this is uh, if you are not getting power uh, when you make your measurement uh, with this white lead look uh, removed and have the meter hooked up down below, if you're not getting power uh, to this point and you're sure that the circuit breaker inside is good, then a quick check to see if you're getting power through the thermostat is simply remove the other lead of the meter and connect it and you can go to either side of this uh, uh, 120 volt side of the uh, uh, thermostat and you can see that uh, we in fact have 120 volts AC. And so what that tell is telling you is that <clears throat> you in fact are getting 120 volts fed down to this switch from this thermostat from inside your power center. And if you have two switches inside, one for propane and one for electric, which is nice uh, on the, some of the Alpines have two switches, uh, if that switch is on and you have this switch on and you aren't getting 120 volts here when you measure across this thermostat, then you know that the problem is before here. In other words, it's either in the switch inside or you have a problem with the wiring on this switch outside or you have a problem where the actual source is that uh, this circuit is connected to the uh, power center. So a uh, couple of things there that uh, I wanted to show you. You can also do the same thing with the 12 volt side. If I wanted to verify that I'm getting 12 volts power through the 12 volt side of the thermostat, I would simply set the meter to DC and connect lead to here and the other lead to ground. And I should see 12 volts uh, when I turn that inside panel switch on uh, for the propane mode. Okay, so with shore power off, I reconnected the white lead and now we're gonna put the cover back over the electric heating element 
and we'll go ahead and install the protective cover back over the 120 and 12 volt uh, thermostat units. Okay, so we've got everything uh, back together that we took apart and we've put the uh, baffling duct back on. <clears throat> and so one final thing to do before we button this up uh, is we're gonna use an 11 uh, six point socket and we're gonna take this anode plug out and I'm gonna put some clean uh, Teflon tape on it wipe the anode rod off. And uh, even though I drained this, uh, there was still just a little bit of residual water in there. But uh, that's what you wanna get out of your tank. And I'm not sure why there was just a little bit left. And maybe I, uh, it's empty. I just didn't get it all out. But anyways, you wanna look at these threads that are inside here. And if they're dirty or corroded up, you can use a small brush and you can go in here and you can just run the brush around inside and clean those threads up. And then on the end of the anode rod that I have removed, we're going to clean this old Teflon tape off. And uh, this uh, rod I put in at the beginning of the year. And you can see that it's uh, doing its job. It's uh, uh, protecting the uh, inside of the tank. And that's what it's supposed to do. We'll use this one uh, on this trip. And it'll still probably look uh, just about like it is right now. Uh, which is uh, in real good shape. Get the camera to focus. And uh, maybe if I zoom out a little bit, uh, there we go. And uh, I could reuse this next year if I wanted to uh, with no problem. But I'll, uh, at the end of this year, when we're done uh, camping, uh, we're going to make this uh, trip to Yellowstone and we might do a couple of boondocking trips uh, uh, in uh, mid October, late October before the first snow falls. And then uh, I'll. Uh, take this anode rod out, flush the tank out again, and uh, put the uh, water heater tank uh, bypass valve and bypass, and blow out the uh, system, and then put antifreeze in it, and uh, we'll be good uh, for the year. But uh, we'll clean this anode up just a little bit, put some new Teflon tape on, and then reinstall it. Okay, we've uh, got the uh, anode plug uh, nice and clean, used a brush on it, got the old Teflon tape off of it, and we'll wrap the end of that uh, with uh, some Teflon tape, about uh, three wraps uh, around those threads, and then we'll reinstall this anode uh, rod. And as you can see, the uh, anode rod uh, now has Teflon tape on it, and uh, we'll go ahead and reinstall it uh, into the water heater and tighten it up. Okay, I have now uh, inserted the anode rod, and you can see that we're tightening it up uh, by hand first. Never install one of these uh, using a socket uh, because if you cross threaded the threads you're not going to be able to feel it so always start it by hand and then we're going to put our uh, extension on and we're going to tighten it down by hand just a little bit more and then we'll put uh, the ratchet on here and as you can see i'm using a half inch ratchet a three eighths would do but this is the one that i carry and i carry two sockets uh, 11 sixteenths uh, specifically for this water heater in case i have a problem and uh, we're going to just snug this up and we're doing this one-handed and that's snug enough and so we know now that the uh, water heater is uh, functional in both uh, AC mode and uh, in uh, propane mode because we verified that uh, after we pull the uh, burner assembly out and igniter assembly out and cleaned it, put it all back together, had the wife come and uh, help and uh, uh, put everything back in. I also like to keep this panel wiped out and when you drain one of these, uh, uh, of course, the first thing you wanna do is uh, you want to let the water heater cool down and then when you go to take this plug out, you want to stand off to the side a little bit and start loosening this plug up uh, because if you stand right in front of it, like I am right now, and you pull this plug out, there's 12 gallons of water in there. And even if the water is cold because you let it cool down, which is what you need to do so you don't get burnt, if you pull this plug out and you're standing in front of it, uh, you're immediately going to get doused with a nice big stream that's going to fly right out of here and hit you right in the gut and you're going to have water all over you and uh, little white flakes uh, that uh, uh, come off the uh, uh, 
anode rod as it uh, breaks down. And uh, how do I know that? Because uh, about 35 years ago or so, I made that dumb mistake and stood right in front of it, pulled that plug out, and I wasn't impressed. So don't make that mistake. Clean up after your work. Make sure that you've got uh, everything uh, nice and clean. And some of these water heaters I see when the guys open the panels up, uh, even on a newer model, uh, I mean, it looks like it's 40 years old. This one is eight years old, and you can see that there is no corrosion uh, that I can see uh, on anything. And the reason it's like that is because every time I drain this, I dry all of this off and I make sure that I keep it uh, nice and clean. And also what I do when I travel, I take this roll of Teflon tape and I stick it right there and then I put the lid on. And then if I do have a problem or if for some reason this anode leaks and I need to take it out for whatever the reason might be, I've got tape right here and uh, I can rewrap it. The tape's not going to go anywhere and it's not going to affect anything. It's not going to catch on fire. So easy place to carry the uh, tape. All the work that I just did and showed you folks was done using this simple little tool kit and a little multimeter. In this case, it's a fluke, but uh, you don't need to run out and buy uh, a fluke meter. Uh, any uh, $15 to $18 meter will work. And uh, 11 16 six-point socket is what I use. It doesn't need to be half-inch drive, but uh, three-inch drive, six-point, uh, 11 16 socket for the anode rod uh, to, to remove and reinstall it. And uh, that's all the tools that you need. So uh, it's an easy job. And uh, if I was in a hurry and wasn't filming this, I could do all of what you just saw probably in about 40 minutes or less. So that wraps it up on the uh, Suburban uh, SW12DEL uh, uh, electric and propane uh, water heater. For those of you that have the uh, newer Alpines that have the on-demand water heater, uh, you're on your own with that one. Uh, it's a nice system, but I like the, uh, the older system. It's easy to work on and uh, suits us well, but uh, I think the folks that have the on-demand will I like theirs just as well, but uh, showed you what we can, and now we got to pick up the mess and uh, get ready to uh, uh, cook a little dinner here in about an hour or so. Have a good uh, good day. We'll catch you another day here from Idaho.